Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at BT08 and BT08 offers us lots of new and powerful cards to build some uh, new and exciting decks with and iterate and update some current and existing ones as well. And today's deck I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be the Eosmon deck. Well, I guess I'm going to be talking about two versions of Eosmon. There's the black base meme version and uh, there is the actual green, you know, Eosmon that's playable. So uh, I'm not saying that the black version isn't playable, it is just more of a meme rather than a functional deck, just because you are trying to take advantage of Kyberamon and its rainbow evolution to be able to shove a Kurosarimon underneath it, ideally the BT05 Kurosarimon because it'll give all of your other Eosmon's brush to basically have Eosmon swing and then play another one and then swing and then play another one and then swing and play another one. The only problem with the deck is it requires a vast amount of setup and I don't necessarily think this deck can move it that fast to be able to get it set up easier than some other combo based decks. But the whole idea is that you're going to have Chimeramon, Digivolve on top of Kurosarimon, Digivolve into whatever level 6, it could be uh, the uh, BT06 one or it could be the BT07 one, it doesn't necessarily matter, they're all Eosmon by name, and then you're supposed to have an Eosmon on the field, and then you swing with this Eosmon to be able to get the ball rolling while you sit on uh, the big Eosmon that's going to give them all rush. And we have a whole bunch of name-based synergy cards, thanks to the Black Diaboramon low end, that we could try to take advantage of, so if we do have a Karamon, Underneath, then when we play an Eosmon and attack with our Eosmon, we're going to be drawing a card, so that way we could try to draw through our deck to see more Eosmons to keep the combo going. So it is a really fun and interesting deck, but it is more of a meme rather than something actually competitively viable. But if you are looking for something a little bit more competitively viable, then you're still going to be using the green base for the most part. So uh, the deck really hasn't changed a whole lot. It does get a few new tools that, that it wants to incorporate it in the form of Digimon Emperor as another white tamer for you to adopt. And then you could use uh, Kogamon and Rapidmon in some various interesting ways, just because Kogamon's just a really good inheritable for Eosmon, so that way it de-incentivizes them from attacking into Eosmon, and it forces them to deal with it in other ways if they can, and then Rapidmon is a good card to use just because we are already playing lots of tamers, and he's a good card to have some solid tamer-based synergy. So this is definitely going to be a more competitively viable version of Eosmon, and Eosmon is still going to be a more fun casual deck at the end of the day. So without further ado, onto the actual deck profile. Starting off with the Digitama, I'm going to be running one copy of Pinamon. So Pinamon is just to help uh, act as a solid draw engine and is the fifth Digitama. It could really be anything you want it to be, but I like Pinamon just because it has the nice uh, inheritable ability of when attacking once per turn. When your Digimon attacks the opponent's Digimon, then you get to draw a card. And then as far as the main Digitama of the deck goes, I'm going to be running uh, four copies of uh, Koromon, just because uh, Koromon is a little bit better in terms of how we actually want to be using the card. So even though it's not helping us draw cards, it's helped uh, rig the top of our deck, which is pretty important, so that way we could actually draw what we need. So uh, Koromon's uh, inheritable ability is when attacking, we get to reveal the top card of our deck, and we either get to put it on the top or bottom. So again, we could rig the top to get the cards that we need and uh, ditch the the cards that we don't. Next, on to the rookies, I'm going to be running four copies of Terriermon. So Terriermon is that anti-meta card where you're just trying to shut off uh, the opponent's uh, memory manipulating shenanigans with his ability where during all turns it, your opponent can't gain memory except by tamer effects, so it forces the opponent to deal with Terriermon if they're going to want to do any of their memory manipulating shenanigans. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Wormon. So Wormon is going to be one of the search engines for the deck because he has this nice on-delete ability where we get to reveal the top three cards of our deck and then add a level four or level five Digimon from among them into our hand and then the rest go to the bottom. The majority of this deck is going to be level five Eos Mons, so it's a really good way at trying to help dig those cards out. And as a good complement to, to uh, Wormon, I'm going to be also running four copies of Morphemon as the last rookie of the deck, because this is doing a very similar job to Wormon, where it's a nice on-delete ability, acting as a solid search tool, where we get to reveal the top five cards of our deck, add one uh, Manoa, 
and one Digimon with Eosmon in its name from among them into our hand, and then the rest go to the bottom, acting as a more dedicated searcher for the deck. Next, on to the champions, I am going to be running four copies of Kogamon. So, Kogamon is in the deck, not necessarily because he's part purple, and we're just using him just because his inheritable ability of giving retaliation is just generically good to de-incentivize the opponent from attacking into our Eosmon, otherwise their Digimon is going to end up getting deleted as well. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Eosmon. So this is the level 4 version of Eosmon, and this card is just okay. We're trying to use this card more so for its inheritable ability rather than its on play ability, but its on play ability is nice to have every now and then, especially since we don't necessarily need to uh, digivolve it on top of a level 3 into this card. So its on play ability states that uh, you get to play one white tamer card with a play cost of 4 or less from your hand for free, then your opponent gets to play one tamer card from their hand for free. So even though giving the opponent the ability to play one of their tamers for free isn't the best thing in the world, sometimes having your own cards to set up and knowing your opponent might not have a tamer in hand still makes this card a really good card to use. But again, its inheritable ability is the primary goal of this card, where it's a when attacking inheritable ability where you get to uh, play one of your white tamer cards with a play cost of 4 or less from your hand for free, so it's the same type of ability just when you're attacking, and there's no downside to uh, utilizing this ability unlike its on play ability. And then the last uh, champions of the deck is going to be two copies of Rapid Bon. So Rapidmon is a really solid Digimon for this deck to be playing because, well, we're already playing Terriermon, so we could use his alternative evolution cost to Digivolve him on top of a Terriermon for 3 instead of paying 4 normally. We're not always looking to go up into this card, but this card is a pretty good card uh, to go up into for its armor purge ability, so that way when this card gets deleted, it'll just revert back into whatever level 3 that you were using. Then it has a nice uh, when digivolving ability, which is the primary reason why we're looking to even use this card in the first place, where we get to suspend one of the opponent's Digimon for each tamer that we have in play, which we could have a lot because we could try to flood the field with our tamers, which is just how Eosmon wants to work in general. Then up to three of the opponent's uh, suspended Digimon gets minus uh, 5,000 DP until the end of the turn, so it could even help uh, control the field on top of suspending the opponent's Digimon down, creating safer targets for our Eosmons to potentially swing into. Next, on to the ultimates, I'm going to be running uh, 14 copies of Eosmon. So uh, this is the only ultimate in the deck that we need because, well, we could run as many copies of this card as we want into our deck. And we want to run a lot of copies of this card because it's when attacking ability it natively has, feeds into itself uh, where when this card attacks, you get to play one level 5 or lower Eosmon from your hand for free. So the whole idea is you're just going to swing with this Eosmon, then play another Eosmon, the next turn swing with more Eosmons, so you'll be able to amass a uh, wide board relatively quickly, left unchecked. And then this card also has a nice generic inheritable ability, where during your turn, this Digimon gets plus 1000 DP to make whatever level 6 that we're going to be using even stronger than it normally would be. And speaking of our uh, level 6s, next I'm going to be running 4 copies of Eosmon. So this is uh, the BTO6 version of Eosmon, and this Eosmon is still just the best level 6 that we have for the deck. Even though we do have another Eosmon, it's just not as good or efficient as what this card is doing. So even though this card does have a relatively high Digivolution cost, which is a little bit unfortunate, it's still a very powerful card because it has a nice uh, when Digivolving ability, where for each teamer you and your opponent have in play, then we get to place a level 5 or lower Eosmon from our trash uh, to the top of this card's Digivolution source. Then if two or more cards were placed into its inheritable source uh, by this ability, then we get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon acting as some really good removal while also filling up its inheritable sources so that way we can make this Eosmon even stronger than it normally would be. Then on top of that it also has a nice secondary ability where during your turn for every three cards in this Digimon's Digivolution source this Digimon gains security attack plus one so that way if it has a big stack then we could swing with a lot of DP and a lot of security checks to deal lots of damage relatively quickly. And then the last uh, level 6 of the deck is going to be one copy of Eosmon. 
So this is the BTO7 version of Eospawn, and this is still just a pretty decent card just because if we're trying to amass a wide board of level 5s, well, this is just an easy Eospawn to go into. So what this card is doing is during your turn, all of your other Eospawns get plus 1000 DP, so it's mainly meant to boost all of the other level 5s to make them a little bit stronger. Then it has a nice on-delete ability to replace itself where you may play a level 5 or lower Eosmon from your hand for free. So when this Eosmon goes away, a level 5 will come out and then continue with the aggression that way. Next, on to the options, I'm going to be running two copies of Cutting Edge. So Cutting Edge is a flex spot for the deck, it doesn't necessarily have to be this card if you don't want it to be, I just think this is a good card because it still has some solid synergy with the deck. So what this card is trying to do is it's trying to help uh, refill our field and delete an opponent's Digimon all at the same time. So its main ability states that uh, you get to play one level 5 or lower Eosmon from your hand for free, then we get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon with DP equal to or less than uh, the Digimon we played off of this ability. So the whole idea is we're just going to try to play a level 5 to delete something that has 6000 DP or below, or if we need to at worst we could play the level 4 and delete something with a 4000 DP or below, so it's really just going to target mid to low level Digimon. Then it has the nice security ability of activating its main, so it's even acting as a good security threat uh, when it's checked to help us uh, refill the field, and then we could use that uh, card to start aggressing with right away to play more Eosmons and get the ball rolling again. And then the last uh, option card of the deck is going to be two copies of win rate 60%. So win rate 60% is a really strong option card for this deck to be playing just because, well, our main Eosmon is going to be a little bit on the expensive side in order to use and we actually want to start subtly filling up our trash so that way when we digivolve into the BTO6 uh, level 6 Eosmon, we're going to have even more potential with that card. So what this card is doing is if we have a tamer in play, we could use this option without meeting its memory requirements. We don't care because we're a primarily white based deck. But what we do want to use the card for is its main ability, where the next time one of our Digimon Digivolves, we get to trash one Digimon from our hand of the same color as the Digivolving Digimon to reduce the memory cost of that Digivolution by 4, so it's just basically a net minus 2 on whatever we're Digivolving into, which is pretty good, so that way we could not pass the turn when we Digivolve into our main Eosmon. And then it has the nice security ability to add this card back into our hand so we could use it whenever we feel like we need to. And then lastly, onto the Tamers, I'm going to be running four copies of Minoa. So Minoa is going to be the deck's dedicated memory fixing tamer, so at the start of our turn, if our memory is ever less than 3, she'll just heart set us to 3. Then uh, this card obviously has some really good Eosmon synergy, where during your turn, uh, when you play an Eosmon, you get to suspend this card to reveal the top 3 cards of your deck, and add 1 tamer or 1 Eosmon from among them into your hand, and then the rest go to the bottom. So this card is also acting as a solid consistency tool for us literally playing our Eosmons, which is how our level 4 five Eosmons want to be played anyway. And then on top of that, uh, she has a third ability, which is really, really powerful or could be, where during the opponent's turn, while you have an Eosmon on your field, your opponent's uh, tamers don't unsuspend during their unsuspend phase, essentially locking them down if they are suspended from being able to reuse some of their abilities to uh, keep them at bay and limit some of their actions. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of the Digimon Emperor. So the Digimon Emperor is a new white tamer card that came out with BTO8 and is a pretty solid tamer card for the deck to want to use to try to help it control the opponent's field. So it has the nice all turns ability where when one of your opponent's level 5 or lower Digimon is deleted, we get to suspend this tamer to draw a card, adding to the overall card draw and being able to have the opponent's Digimon get deleted isn't necessarily the hardest thing in the world. Then on top of that, it has a nice ability where during the opponent's turn, when one of the opponent's level 3 uh, Digimon moves from their raising area to the battle area, then you get to gain 2 memory, de-incentivizing the fact that they want to be utilizing their rookies, acting as a really solid control tool for the deck. And then the last uh, tamer of the deck I'm going to be using is uh, 3 copies of Analog Youth. 
So Analog Youth is a really good setup card just because it's acting as another consistency tool where it has an on play ability where we get to check the top three cards of our deck and add one Digimon from among them into our hand and then trash the rest. So what we're going to be looking for most of the time off of uh, this Tamer is going to be our Eos Mons and we don't care if we uh, put other Eos Mons into our trash because of how the main level six works. Then it has a nice secondary ability where during all turns, when one of your level 5 or higher Digimon with Digivolution sources gets deleted, then we get to suspend this Tamer to uh, gain a memory and hatch a Digi-Egg. So when our main Eos Mana eventually goes away, then we get to uh, basically punish the opponent for trying to do that by at least gaining a memory out of the card and hatching another Digi-Egg in our raising area. If it gets deleted during our turn, then we could use this aggressively to reload our raising area with another stack to move out the following turn to be extra aggressive with. And then there's still just a ton of room for flexibility and customization in the deck. I already showed you utilizing a black end is possible even though it's not optimal, but we could even think about utilizing a purple low end just because we also have that transition Digimon of Kogamon. We theoretically could if we wanted to use yellow as well just because of Rapidmon, but I think Rapidmon is a little bit more expensive and harder to use. But as far as like some really solid purple cards that, that we could use, we could use at Demi Merimon as the purple egg just to Try to help draw and discard, filling up our trash so that way when we go into our main level 6 Eosmon, we have Eosmons as possible targets to shove underneath our level 6. Then on top of that, we could utilize a whole bunch of really good rookies with on delete abilities even more to gain various different benefits. So we could use Tapermon to help draw some extra cards, we could use Lekmon to help delete some of the opponent's low level Digimon. And then we even have some really solid options that we could try to take advantage of in the form of Jack Wright to try to gain some instant memory. And we even have uh, Schwartz Lizards as a good card to interact with the fact that we want to be playing our Tamers and have a wide field of Tamers to try to help control the opponent's field. Then we do have Armageddon as a possible level 7 for the deck to be incorporating just because it can digivolve off of white level 6s, and we also could think about utilizing Susanomon for a very similar reason, just because he's another Digimon with a rainbow evolution as a good level 7. Then, as far as some other really solid green cards go, we could use any Digimon with the Argamon stat line of 2 to hard play, 0 to evo, 3000 DP, just because they're relatively efficient and relatively strong rookies. Then if you wanted to, we actually do have space to want to think about incorporating a blocker, so we could run Woodmon as one of the best uh, level 4 blockers that we have access to. But if you wanted to, you could throw in one copy of the Argamon level 5, just because the Argamon level 5 is still just that good of a card, with his Digisorption 3 ability to Digivolve for free, and the ability to play our green rookies for free when we attack with our Digimon is still really good. But if the whole goal and intention is to try to quickly go up into our Eosmon, then we do have Hidden Potential Discovered, that also is limited to one, to try to help uh, act as that Digisorption ability for our Eosmon to take advantage of. But if we do just want some more removal options, green doesn't really have that many great removal options, so you could just use some more suspending tools like Needle Spray to just try to suspend the opponent's Digimon down. Then we do have uh, some other really solid tamers that we could run in the deck. So you could run Takumi as another white tamer to de-incentivize the use of the opponent's level 3s. The only problem is this de-incentivizes us from using our level 3s, which we want to be relatively aggressive with just because uh, most of them will have on delete ability. But it does help us to draw extra cards when we choose to digivolve. Then we also have uh, Izzy if we are going to be... Uh, suspending the opponent's Digimon down, so that way we could passively gain some memory for the act of suspending, and we have some really other solid ways to build the deck, so you could shift the entirety of the deck to incorporate the green hybrids and utilize JP. So JP can help us go up the stack relatively efficiently, just because he helps reduce the evolution cost, and the evolution cost of a lot of our hybrids could be really cheap anyway, on top of the fact that he could give our level 6 Eosmon the piercing ability. And we do have a slew of really solid hybrids that we could think about utilizing to set up and build to that green hybrid variant. So we do have Beetlemon, we have uh, Metal Kabuterimon, we have Arbormon, then we even have uh, Rhino Kabuterimon as uh, the good level 5 to Evo for 1 on top of our Tamer stack, so that way we could easily go up into our Eosmon. 
But that just goes to show that there's a ton of flexibility in terms of uh, the tech and tools that, that we can incorporate, all depending on what we actually want to gain out of the deck. There's even more packages and sub packages that you could think about incorporating, all depending on what you want your low end to be looking like uh, to try to help support Eosmon in some unique and interesting ways. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And uh, as always, uh, don't forget to, to like, uh, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.